excited to be here and to share this with you. During quarantine, I decided to create some painting classes and I went about it like from back when I was younger and the things that I wish I had when I was learning to paint, I wanted to be able to like sit down and watch somebody from start to finish. And so that's essentially what these classes are. So here's what all it includes. A paints crash course video that talks to you about the different types of paint, color mixing videos that teach you how to mix colors. There are 10 separate painting courses and each one is broken into three segments a beginning, middle, and an end. There's also free bonus material that's available to you through my website. If you want, I have a lot of extra resources for you, printables, um, tips um, on how to make your artwork better, tips on choosing your color palette, all that kind of stuff. You can receive that on my website if you go to www.samanthawood.art and go up to the top where it says art class. You can click that and then um, fill out the little form there for email and the request for um, that extra bonus information and I'll email that to you. And you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and then also on TikTok. On Instagram especially, I would love for you um, to share what you're painting and to tag me um, so that I can see what you are up to. You can also check out what kind of art I'm creating and what I've been up to while you're there. I'd love to see um, what you're creating and find out if these courses have been helpful to you. So anyways, we will go ahead now and get started on this first lesson. Oh, one last thing. This little intro is going to be the same on every single video, so you can just skip it um, or pick up. Like if you don't need the color mixing videos, just pick up where you're interested um, along the way. I'll be releasing this content on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week for the next few months until everything has been released. So anyways, I'm excited that you're here and I hope to see you over on Instagram or Facebook too. All right guys, I'm excited that you're here. It is summertime and one of the best things about summertime is the ice cream. So we are gonna have fun with this painting and we are gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so you'll notice I've got my pink background on the canvas and now I'm just gonna kinda go in and outline like the main shapes. And you see like the white counter that runs along the bottom of the reference photo. I'm getting that in place first. It's kinda just the easiest thing. Um, but it, getting that in place kind of helps you to measure and get the other points <clears throat> in their spots correctly. So like if you didn't do that until later, you know, your ice cream cone might be off on the sizes and stuff. So just getting that there kind of helps. Um, another tip that I can give you is those angles of the little clear acrylic ice cream holder that it's sitting in. Um, to get those angles right, I'll hold my paintbrushes like up in front of my picture and kind of feel what angle it's at and then kind of hold it in front of my canvas and then paint it. And that really, I don't know, feeling it like that can really help you to get those angles correct. Um, another thought is they are parallel to each other, so they're going at the exact same angle. So that's another thing you can kind of check. And now I'm kind of measuring, you can see along the side of my canvas, um, deciding like how big, like where it should come to and how big the cone should be um, and all of that. If you mess up during this part, it does not matter. Acrylic dries really fast and you can cover over it. So just kind of go around, um, get your shapes and lines in place. And if you mess up, just get some pink or your background color and just paint over that white line if it's not correct. Okay, so right here I'm noticing that the area like for the scoop is not big enough and like my bumpy lines where the chocolate dipped cone is should have come a little bit lower. So I'm going on and getting that line in place. 
or those lines in place and then I'm just going to get some pink on my brush and cover up the lines that I'm not going to use um, so that that way I don't get confused. So see, it's already like I'm having to think, wait, that's the one I'm not wanting to use. So go ahead and paint over those whenever you mess up so you don't get confused. Um, but it's best to go ahead and correct in the earlier stages and spend a lot of time making sure that you have it right now because right now it's an easy fix. But once you spend the time, you know, on more of the shading and details later, it's a lot harder to fix. Okay, so now that I've got all the outlines in place, it's kind of just like time to like have fun and like I kind of treat it as like coloring in in a coloring book page. Like I'm kind of staying inside the lines that I created for myself. I am paying attention to like darker and lighter areas. So you can see like on the cone, I just put the dark area down the middle and then I'm coming in with like a lighter color with a little bit more yellow in it um, at the sides. And so I will just kind of blend those a little bit, but I'm not trying to like paint all the lines that you see on the cone and all the details. I'm just blocking in colors at this point. So now that I've got some color on the cone, I'm going ahead where it's like dipped in the chocolate. And if you look closely at the photo, it looks a little bit um, darker, like on the right upper corner. Um, so I'll add like just the smallest bit of white to kind of lighten up that brown chocolatey color. Um, and if your brown is not dark enough, like try mixing it like um, with just a touch of black to get that nice kind of like dark chocolate color. Um, but then you can go in and get it a little bit lighter by just adding a drop of white. Okay, so when it comes to painting in the actual scoop of ice cream, you'll notice, you know, that there's a lot of shadows like where the ice cream kind of folds over and then there's like a highlight on the top where it's lighter. Um, and you can use like tans and browns for your shadows. That's pretty realistic to the photo. Um, I like to use um, like some blue and some pinks a lot of times um, in my shadows or a purple color. Um, and so I'm kind of mixing in. I have my white color that I added just a little bit of bronze yellow to um, for the ice cream. But then I just mixed just a touch of, I think it was a brilliant blue um, and kind of blended that out. Um, and this is just the first coat. So like experiment like with your shadows, like what colors you want them to be um, and play around with that because you can always come back. You're going to have to do a couple more layers to get, you know, it looking nice and solid. And then right there for my darkest shadows, I put some of that dark brown down and some of it will probably get covered up by the white as I go forward and get blended out. But at least I've got that kind of dark base under there to create that depth for that shadow. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the little clear acrylic stand. Um, and don't let that, like if that's something that worries you about how do I paint something clear, it's really just the same as like the cone. Just look for your light areas and your dark areas and get those in place. So the thing that stood out to me is how that line on the right was a darker blue. So I put that in place first. And then you can kind of match up with what I'm doing to the reference photo and see, oh yeah, there's that little dark blue dash. And so I'm just painting exactly what I'm seeing from the reference photo. And since I'm going to be mixing like the tones for my background and that's the color um, of the stand, I've decided to go ahead and get my background color in place. That way I've kind of got a feel for what color I want the stand to be since you see through it. So I'm going ahead and just getting that in place and then I'll go back to finishing up the stand.
And like in your background, like this is an area to have fun. Choose colors that like you really like. Um, have some areas lighter if you want, some areas that are darker. Um, you can make it really smooth or you can leave some brush strokes showing. So this is kind of like, you know, time to work on figuring out your style, figuring out what you think um, is interesting, um, what is most exciting to you. And so, like I'm taking kind of a lot of time stopping and looking at it, thinking, do I want it to be lighter? Do I want it to be darker? Do I want more blue, more purple? Um, and I really, really love the color that is in the reference photo. So I'm trying to kind of stick pretty close to that one for this time, but you are welcome to completely change that background color to something else. So now that I've got my background color like in place, it's easy to go in now. Since I've still got those white line outlines showing for the acrylic stand, I'm just going in and painting, you know, the area that we see through because it's about the same color as the actual background, but I can still, I'm going around those white lines so I can still see the shape of it. I just switched to a smaller brush because I am going in and working you know on those like outlines of the stand and the one to the left kind of has like a pink tint to it and so I'm exaggerating that I like to add bright pops of color in my work um, so if there's a certain color that you like you wouldn't necessarily have to keep it pink you could have it orange or red or purple or whatever and of course if you didn't like it you can just cover over it Okay, so as I've been painting, I've just like put lighter blues in the areas that are lighter, darker lines where I see darker blues. And then um, right now I'm putting kind of like that lighter white line along the top and then those little lines that are kind of in the curve. Um, and then I will about be finished with the first coat and I will let that dry and then come back and we'll focus on adding in some more of that detail on the second coat. All right, so we got the hard part out of the way today. We've got all our outlining done. We've got our colors mapped out and on there. And so we are ready to move on to part two. Mm -hmm. 